Ladies and gentlemen, I am B-A-C-K. Yes, in today's episode, we're going to be talking about color grading with keyframes, everything you need to know, no bullshit. Let's not waste your time and get right into it. All right, guys, so keyframes. Keyframes are pretty much crucial points or frames in your scene. So you're going to mark a start of a movement, a start of a change, and you're going to mark the end of a movement, the end of a change. Pretty much like that, okay? This is the opening shot of the music video with Central C and 21 Savage that I did for Lyrical Lemonade with the man itself, Cold Bennett. Uh, if you open up your color page right here, you're going to see this, okay? Let me move my camera, sorry. Your keyframe tab is in here. See this? This is your scope. This is your keyframe tab. You can click right here to make it bigger, or you can go to Workspace and Dual Screen. That way you open up a page, something like that. I just make a print screen because I'm not recording the other screen. So it can make your life easier, okay? So let's navigate in this tab right here. So this is the enable and disable track. That's it. You enable and disable the track. This is the when you lock the track and unlock the track. If you don't want to mess it up, you do some dumps and changes. You don't want to mess it up. You lock it, unlock it. This is the auto keyframe. You can turn it on. And as soon as you do changes, the keyframes are going to be created but you have to be selecting the keyframe that you're on. So number one, corrector one. So you go like this and you make um, like this, make a zero or make it you know, warmer. So you go from here, cold to warmer, right? If you just came here to know quickly how to do it, that's it. But if you do want to know everything, stay with me. Hip, 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 hip. Okay, drop a like. One second. One, two, three. Okay, there was more. One, two, one. So uh, this is the collapsible menu. In here, you're going to have all this information. Here, you can do separately, you know, to be better organized. Your linear window, circle window. You know, we can do these changes in this transform and softness. You can keyframe that. But not the tracking of the window. The window tracking, you track right here. Okay? You can keyframe the window tracking in here you need to use the tracking for that okay in here you're just going to keyframe the parameters okay we're going to talk about this collapsible menu a little bit more later so you have all the nodes that you have like five nodes we have here let me clean up so you guys can see it five nodes and then you have sizing sizing is the when you keyframe changes done in the size tab palette and the 3d palette okay that's it you can't keyframe anything here in the normal node. You got to keyframe here. All right. So this is the zoom. When you zoom in, zoom out, you can zoom in and zoom out like as like this as well. Maximize zoom. It's going to be do a zoom and where your ruler are, your needle, whatever. And you can reset the zoom as well. Uh, these are the tabs. When you are all and you create a keyframe using like this, for example, mark, add keyframe it's going to be adding keyframes to all of them, right? But to delete, you can just hold them like that and click backspace or go to, for example, let me add them again. So add keyframe, you can just go here, mark, delete all keyframes. So this is why this is important. If you go to color and you create a keyframe, I told you, you can create the keyframes right here, add keyframe. Let's see what happens. So see? He highlighted the corrector one that I'm that I'm holding. It only created keyframes where I'm holding the node, right? Corrector one. But if it was on all, it's going to create on everything. Okay. Same for sizing. It's going to be creating only here. But it's only going to be creating in all nodes, all all layers, when you add from here, like this. Because if you add like this, right click and add a static frame, it's only going to add where your needle is. So we have these two different type of keyframes. This is the static, they're abrupt changes. And these are the dynamic keyframes that are linear changes, the change that will go on. It will start with the value, it will slowly go to the value that you want. Okay? Playback, oh, mark, mark delete all keyframes. Okay? Simple. You can also add keyframes by using a command. You can just look at here, mark, and here. 
Windows is Control and Mac is Command. Okay, easy. So we can just equate it on every layer because I'm in the Alt tab. But if I'm going to color, this is good because it's also highlighting the the node that you're holding. For example, this one, and you can just add on that node. This is the master. It's just a parameter to see where there are keyframes to move. Then you can just drag them like that, and you can't just click here and click command or control to hold both. You need to do it like this, okay, to move them. Black Magic always recommend you. This is really important. Have a separate node to create your keyframes, okay? Because let's say you have um, a change here, you have a change here, and then you keyframe contrast here, and then you want to add less blues, and you you know you you don't want to have keyframes on all your changes. Keep the keyframes in separate place because then you can go back to your normal node and do the changes go back or go do something else okay so in here you can see it's a way to be more organized you can keyframe your the focus qualifier the color correction which is pretty much these tabs th through here this tabs color correction everything you do here it's going to be separate these are windows you see here uh, linear circle polygon curve gradient linear circle polygon curve gradient as soon as you add an effect for example halation let me add halation here you see the halation will show up here and you can also keyframe something in the parameters here, okay? Something really important to change keyframe values. Let's say if you do a change on top of the keyframe, of course, the change is going to go to that keyframe. But if you're doing a dynamic keyframe and your needle is on the right of the first dynamic keyframe, that change will go to the next or to the first dynamic keyframe. If you on top of the last keyframe and do some changes, the change will go to that keyframe. But if you go to the left, what will happen? That change will go to the first or to the previous keyframe. Okay? Why is that? I don't know. Sometimes people misclick or sometimes you have to zoom too much. So that's a DaVinci Resolve feature that you don't need to be exactly on top of it. This you can change, of course. You can right click and change to static keyframe if you want. Oh, my bad. You can go on top of it, right click, uh, change to static keyframe, and then it will transform from dynamic keyframe to static keyframe. And can also right click and change the dynamic, dynamic keyframe again. Oh, you can also, this is, this is cool. You can also change the dynamic keyframes attributes like this, for example. Um, if you do like that, you sort of create a is in, is out. This is cool. A lot of editors like to do that, you know, so it's possible here. By default, this comes like this, right? As, as it was. But you can go right here, file, I believe, um, project settings, cam general options. Okay, here, here, dynamic profile, you can change here to be your standard, okay? Let's talk something really important now, which is copy pasting. There's a huge difference between node to node and clip to clip, okay? And you guys will understand. Note to note, it's pretty intuitive. Just Command C, Control C, Command C, Control C. You copy the keyframes. But when you apply to another clip, sometimes you won't go. So if you go here and paste, apply grade, what happened? Where's the keyframes? It won't show up. Guys, pay attention. This is really important. If you paste the keyframes, if you paste the look thinking the keyframes and not double checking if the keyframes were paste, you're screwed. So how should we do? So I have two nodes with keyframes right now. How can I do this? Well, if you just go here, instead of clicking apply, you click a band grade. Look what happened. You can just delete the first node, clean up, and you'll have your keyframes when you append the grade. Okay, guys? Easy, 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 easy. This is really useful because, for example, let's say you're doing a music video and the guy goes and change um, and change a scene and adds like two seconds of the same scene. You, you can apply that and then adjust, you know? Ah, now I want to adjust this for the beginning because the clip is longer. 
It's the same clip, it's just a little bit longer. So just adjust. Okay, stills guys. Stills are a little bit complicated as well because if you save a look as a still, for example, I save this look as a still and then you try to apply it. Let's see if the keyframes are coming up. You see, the keyframes won't show up. That's because the default of the Vinci Resolve is to not paste the keyframes together with it. And that's better, trust me. But you can change that. You can right click here in an empty space, apply grades using keyframes aligning source time code or start frames. Let's put like um, time code, whatever. And then you just apply grade and then your keyframes are gonna be in there. Easy, quick. All right, guys, so this is the shot that we did for the Lyrical Lemonade music video with Central C, oops, with Central C and 21 Savage. And uh, I'll just name a few keyframes that I did here, but uh, if you guys want to see the actual project, let me know in the comments. I can show the entire project. I'm just not going to show because it's going to be complicated. It's too much nodes and some people are going to be lost. But if you really interested in seeing the actual project like I did with Stop Giving Me Advice with Jack Harlow and Dave, the music video also for Lyrical Lemonade, let me know that I can do an open project. Let me just show you guys a few keyframes that I did here, okay? The first keyframe that I did here was Little Tree. You'll see what I'm saying. The second one was Floor. The third one was uh, Walls. The fourth one was flag and they were all done by the same principle. My keyframes were done by key output. What do you mean, Vinny? Key output, guys. Oh, shit. I did the effect that I wanted and I keyframed the amount of key output that I want. So example, uh, let's say let's say I want to do this red. So I just highlighted the red example. OK, I just highlighted the red. And uh, oh shit, because you see, auto keyframe was on. As soon as I did something, it created automatic. That's why you always want to check it, check this box off as soon as you're done. That's also why I don't recommend too much using auto keyframe, okay? Because you can forget and have a mess. So to delete all keyframes, mark that all keyframes, okay? So let's see. The flag, I won my, what I did was pretty much from here, let's say, um, Add dynamic keyframe here, and then to the end, it's gonna let's say saturate. Let's say from this point, I want my reds to be super saturated. I'll just do it roughly as as bad as this, just so you guys understand. Okay, so my bad. I'm just gonna add a dynamic frame and then saturate. Okay. You see the saturation starts here and it finishes here and it's going to go to to the end of the clip okay it was not a, a saturation keyframe that i did it was pretty much changed the tone of the red but that was one but my keyframe was about gain the key output so what i did here uh let's say i started here uh another keyframe let's say something like that and it was um 200 for example and then in here, it was five. Oh, in here, the saturation was already kicking in, let's say. Five, and then in here, 100, and it finishes with 100. So you see, it was, I did the change, but my actual keyframe, that was too abrupt, but you got what I'm saying. You, got, you get what I'm saying. My actual keyframe was with key output. But of course, you can key the saturation as well. I just did like that because I felt that was more practical. I don't know. So I did this key output for, uh, to make this little tree here uh, less bright because it was too bright. Cole asked me to make less bright and I did. Uh, so I created, let's say I created a mask here and I tracked the mask from here and I started here with a static keyframe. Here, static keyframe, boom. And then slowly goes here and in here it's 100% of the change, 100% key output, for example. And then I make it uh, less bright. And then from here to here, I made the window go out and then the effect goes out as well. Uh, for the walls, 
uh, no, for the floor, I did a gradient that, that goes up, then I track it, and then I also uh, did the keyframe. For example, uh, I made from here, let's say from here, let's say like that. I made he, the, the gradient move from this frame to this frame, let's say, and then stay like that to the end of the clip. And then I, the keyframe was the output from here zero to here, let's say, 100, and then it stay like that. Everything was the output key, and, but if you want, you could also key the va uh, keyframe the values instead of the key output. That was pretty much how I did the keyframes on this shot. Oh, something really important. If you watch this video as soon as I release, it will probably not be available, but I'm planning to do a few mini courses, like opening up big projects like that, big music videos like this one, like many other ones I did with big celebrities or huge uh, commercials like Coca-Cola, McDonald's, name it, I did it, guys. Like, I have so many things to share with you guys. Check the description and check the comments if it's in there because it's released. Uh, I guess that was it. Thank you guys for watching. I hope that was worth it. Drop a like, subscribe. Next week, another video, hopefully. Yes, because I'm B-A-C-K. Yeah.